Okay, next, uh, a virtual world framework. Uh, virtual worlds are in all of our worlds in the future. The uh, real world isn't good enough. We want to make it bigger, better, faster. And uh, these folks are creating virtual worlds. Um, one of the team members here is Rick McGear, who many of you know. He's always up to some interesting, innovative things. This is a group of his friends. And with that, I'll uh, turn it over to them to uh, showcase their work. Thank you. So my name's David Smith. Uh, I'm Chief uh, Innovation Officer and Senior Fellow at Lockheed Martin MST. Uh, it's Mark Torpy, who's the uh, Principal Investigator on the Virtual World Framework Project. I'm done. Uh, while he's setting up, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about what the framework is. Um, this started out as a vision of uh, Frank DiGiovanni. <clears throat> Frank is the Director of Strategy for Training and Readiness at off uh, the Office of Secretary of Defense. Uh, basically, the need was a cross-services solution that was very easy to develop, easy to deploy, and in particular, being able to uh, work with the in information technologies side of the world uh, was a crucial thing. In other words, we couldn't do the same old thing with a virtual world where we installed it onto your PC. That just wasn't going to work. It didn't scale. Uh, so what we uh, realized was that uh, the technologies behind the web are evolving so quickly and they're so powerful that it was a huge opportunity to basically embrace the direction that it was going and build on top of that. So the virtual world framework uh, took its uh, inspiration in a sense from HTML5 which included a number of key technologies that are new. Uh, first is WebGL, which you're all familiar with. It's uh, basically a, a variant of OpenGL that allows us to get real-time 3D in, in the web itself. Uh, second is WebSockets, which allows us to enable a real-time communication point-to-point -point, uh, or multiple points-to-points. -points. Uh, and then finally, WebRTC. And hopefully, we're going to show some of that. So can you just start playing that, that video? This is actually a video we did of a bunch of different applications, so we're going to kind of skip through this uh, pretty quickly. Uh, why don't you just move forward a little bit? Uh, this first app, uh, skip this. This is uh, Sandtable. This is the first application we actually built. That's two different browsers running, two different users could be thousands of miles apart, and they're able to interact. Anything one guy does, that image, that, that effort is perfectly replicated remotely. So these are two basically identical. Uh, virtual boxes, so to speak. Here's another application. By the way, everything you're seeing here was delivered via a web browser. Uh, there's no plugins, no nothing. Basically, we just were able to, you go to that website, and you can see the website top, top left corner. If you went there right now, you'd be able to get access to this. Um, this is, uh, we are able to pull in other kinds of content into this space and share that. So not only do we uh, have that replicated space, but we can basically put any kind of uh, third-party content. In this case, it's, uh, I believe it's uh, IBM's uh, map tech uh, uh, content. So go to the next one. Uh, this is uh, working with a junior college where we basically uh, did a training application. A lot of what you're going to see here is training applications. Uh, to uh, fix that, that valve. And actually, skip through this one. We're going to show this again in live. Uh, this is uh, uh, the, the doors for a littoral combat ship. Uh, basically, is a training application. It teaches you how to open the doors. Uh, it's basically, you go up there, and, and there's some buttons and things you push. And once you've done that, the doors open up. But the, the thing to focus on is the quality we're able to deliver here. Uh, WebGL is real. I mean, it's an OpenGL, um, I wouldn't even call it a clone. It's basically OpenGL. And so the quality of the experiences you can deliver are extraordinary. Uh, just basically, we're getting close to the point where we can deliver uh, even fairly high quality gaming uh, t uh, content. Skip this one. This is uh, very similar to the last one. Here's a completely different kind of application. This is a collaborative patent search uh, uh, tool that allows us basically to explore a, 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 um, a landscape of patent information like this. I mean, and this basically is the links between the patents, how they relate, and how, and literally you jump, you can jump through this space and, and, and zoom in on it. 
just like we did, and rotate it. It's a, it's a full 3D space itself. Very different kind of application. Again, all web-based. Let me move forward a little. This is, um, we're actually working on a wearable version of the framework. This illustrates that. There's four different screens. Notice that they're perfectly replicated across all four. The bottom left is an iPod Touch. Uh, the one on the bottom is a, or to the right is a big PC. And then we have tablets. And notice every action, just we saw earlier, is replicated. And again, these are, all these need is uh, uh, a web connection, and it works. Uh, this is carry that next step. So we're actually wearing devices that feed directly into that, uh, that application you just saw. So we can actually measure your heart rate or your, or your temperature or whether it's still there. This is a project we did with uh, ADL, a sandbox. And what this is is a, mo a collaborative design tool uh, that allows both of us to interact so that the guy on the left-hand side is actually modifying that box, adding to it. Notice, again, two different browsers. The one's Firefox on the right, Chrome on the left. So he's going to be uh, modifying that, that box. And every modification he makes is, again, shared. It's a replicated state. So he's, he's growing it, shrinking it, and it's a perfect, it's a perfect uh, shared model. What's nice about that from a programmer's perspective is you don't need to know how all that works. Just write your application as if it's going to be uh, um, uh, written for a single user, and it automatically works this way. Uh, we're going to skip this one because we're going to show it in a bit. And then we're, uh, we're going to skip this too. Yeah, just go on to the next thing. Uh, this is uh, the sandbox again that I showed you with the, 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 that little cube that we modified. But what you're seeing here is we can use it to build an entire landscape. Again, this is online right now. It's open source. It's uh, Apache 2 license, which means you or anyone else can take it and do whatever you want to with it. Uh, a very, very flexible technology and a very capable one. We're pretty excited to, to, to bring this uh, to, out to the world, and in particular, uh, uh, working with uh, US Ignite to make this available to their customers is pretty exciting to us. So he's going to do one more thing. And I think this is, really shows off uh, very well what, what, what this is capable of. By the way, those are actual uh, polygonal models in the, in the far distance as well. So let's skip over. And we've got uh, David Easter, who is actually the architect of the virtual framework. Uh, say, wave, wave, David. Hello, everyone. That's, so what we've got here is an application uh, that we built that is uh, basically collaborative uh, uh, training for disassembly of this device. David, why don't you walk through it, if you could. David, why don't you walk through the training and explain the app a little bit? This is a uh, simple simulation of an um, oil valve um, by the company Kimray that uh, has an articulated model that shows how the actual device works in a simple training tool that walks through a maintenance procedure. Um, I can click through these steps one by one, and the uh, engineer is able to understand how the device is put together and what the process is to um, disassemble it. So both of them can interact it simultaneously. So Mark, why don't you just spin it around to get a better view? So David, I'm going to spin the so Mark is in interacting with it. And so both of them are able to work together uh, on a simple application. But remember, what's nice about this is you just write it once, and it's multi-user immediately. Uh, by the way, that, this is actually two apps running uh, in, in, in one inside the other. The outside application where we see the videos, that's the WebRTC, and that's actually the, our, our cross-platform collaboration system that we developed. It's also a virtual world framework app. So we, we not only have this uh, uh, outside app, then we have this other inside app that uh, doesn't have the video built in, but can take advantage of the outside. David, can you share something else instead of the, the valve? I will share my desktop. So what, what he's doing now, and remember, this is all web-based. Uh, again, no plug-in. So he's actually able to save his, uh, uh, the, you're looking at his desktop right now. 
So that's base, that's so it's a pretty flexible platform, pretty easy to use, like I said, very easy to develop for. So the next thing we're going to show you, and the last thing, is we've actually built a, um, a game around this to teach, uh, uh, was it uh, sixth graders or ni ninth graders, how to program uh, robots. So we're going to load that. So this is uh, some placeholder content. Where am I? Who am I? I appear to be on Mars. I have wheels, a computer for a brain, and a battery. Hmm, if I had to guess I would say that I'm a rover. So we can get multiple views, we can put grid lines down. Basically, it's a pretty powerful little application. And again, this is something that was built on top of the virtual framework that we've just been talking about. I need to relearn the basics. I remember this is my internal interface to my programming. So Mark is going to try to uh, solve the problem, which is getting the rover over to that far away um, Whoa, uh, spinning I antenna. Need to watch my power level. Every forward move I make uses some, and I don't have much left. Okay, got that worked out. Now I need to find my radio and call home. Oh, too bad. But uh, this is just the very first level, and it's actually uh, it's a fairly challenging and pretty fun game. Uh, we are now testing it with kids. But again, remember the neat thing about this is go to that website, you can play with it right now. And in fact, you can get the sources for this. It's gonna also be available to people to essentially expand on this or build your own content. So we've got a couple of minutes left for questions. I see the lost um, actually, he's going to show one more thing, which is a graphing calculator. Yeah, turn that down. Um, that allows the kids to solve problems and figure out. Uh, in fact, if you go, all remember the Bresenham's algorithm for graphics. Uh, this is a tool that actually teaches you how to discover Bresenham's algorithm, which is how we used to draw lines in the old days, if you recall. Uh, so it actually figures out a path, and you actually figure out you have to go up one, two, over two, up one, over two, to, to get to the target. So um, we're open for questions if you have any. Uh, that's the virtual framework. We're pretty excited about it, as you can see. It's really uh, 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 it's evolving very, very quickly, and we have a, a very nice community of users, uh, and certainly very interested in expanding on that. Uh, so anyone who has uh, an interest in pursuing this, uh, you can go to virtualworldframework.com or virtual.wf uh, to download all this right now. You can, there's a number of applications, demo applications online right now. Uh, we'll have a lot more, including the, the, the Mars rover will be available. 
It's also on, available on GitHub, so you can download everything you just saw, virtually, almost not, not quite, but almost everything you just saw is on GitHub right now. Uh, totally av available, totally free. And what we're really looking at is having you all help us chart the course of where this should go, or even better, take it to a new place completely. Uh, you don't need us. It's all there. Questions? Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Rob. Thanks. I really appreciate it.